Hello and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker. Today what we're going to be doing is attempting to change the uh, fork springs, these guys here, on the Z900RS. Um, this is the final mod. I know I'm walking off screen, I apologize. <laughs> this, is, this is how this channel goes. This is the final mod on uh, the Z900RS that we're going to be doing for now um, until we can do other ones. Um, but just to show you what I've already done in preparation for this particular video. So, you can see our brake calipers, uh, our cable tied up here, nice little hole there to cable tie onto. Um, obviously the brake calipers are out, those are 12 millimeter bolts uh, to remove them. Same over here. One thing is this is your wheel speed sensor right here which the camera doesn't want to focus on. Thank you, camera. Um, that is held in with an eight millimeter bolt down here. Uh, I would actually advise taking that out before you put on uh, your front stand, just because it's a bit easier. Then we have to take these out. I think these are fives or sixes. I think they were, I think it was a five from memory. Yeah, so that's a five millimeter. Then what we also want to do is loosen this top bolt here uh, in your in your clamp your top triple clamp which is a six mil and we'll do these later these are also six mils um, and the bolt holding in the front wheel which we'll also need to take out is a H14 um, which is really nice because it's really easy to get I don't know any bike that has a really awkward size that you have to special order from anywhere definitely don't know any bike that upset me like that. Definitely don't know any manufacturer that made my life more painful for no reason. Definitely, definitely don't know anything like that. There's one pinch bolt on the front wheel, which is a six, uh, is my guess. And to, to obviously remove that front wheel bolt, we will have to loosen that off. Is it a six? It is a six. Because uh, of course you couldn't possibly loosen uh, your front wheel without, without taking that out. When we're putting everything back together, I will go in and check the torque specs. Uh, for now, I'm just trying to loosen everything. There we go. There's a lot more threads on that than I would. I, I thought there was going to be. <laughs> There's our axle out. Leave it somewhere safe, and then gently roll out the front wheel. While the front wheel is out, you do want to check your bearings. So get in and make sure there's no wiggle. There's not. That's just a spacer, you don't want to lose that. And I'll check the other side. And don't lose your other spacer. And both are absolutely fine. So good, don't need to replace my wheel bearings. Apologies, I just realized I was wearing my good orange Carhartt t-shirt, so I had to go put on my, one of my allowed t-shirts. <laughs> I don't know how much of that you would have heard, I just realized I forgot to put my hat back on, where my microphone is. Um, so I was just saying, when you're taking out your last five millimeter Allen bolt from your front mudguard, make sure you keep a hand on it so it doesn't fall on the ground and get all scratched up. Maybe that's the way to do it. Maybe this comes out last. All right, so next what we want to do is loosen our fork top caps. Um, however, what you do want to do, because these are purdy, is we want to try not scratch them up, up which I don't know if that's going to work. Uh, I know it even says in the service manual put a plastic bag over them, but I'm not really sure how well a plastic bag is going to hold. I will also say generally, a piece of advice is to loosen these before you um, take off the wheel. I should have done that, but I forgot. And if you do forget, and you want to be smart, just slide your axle back through temporarily but make sure you get it on a few threads because if you don't get your axle on a few threads you do risk damaging some threads down in your fork leg which you really do not want 
sorry, I did not realize my battery pack was low. So all we did was put the axle back through here, um, and these are 22s, we loosened off the two four caps. The reason I put the axle back through is I meant to actually loosen these before I took the wheel out, it just makes it easier. And I also gave up on taking off the front mud guard because it, it just looks like it's pain in the ass and I think you probably have to take out the forks to do it. So next what we're gonna do is loosen these two guys here and try slide this fork out and see, see how that works. Obviously you take the axle back, so let's do that. So your fork generally shouldn't just slide free, but I always like to just kind of balance my leg against one uh, when I loosen these bolts for the first time, just in case. Your second bolt that you release will always be slightly tighter because these are pinch bolts. So like, see that top bolt has tightened back up. So you never want to loosen one out too much. You basically just want to wind them out like that until both of them have slack on them. And then you want to do a twisty on this to get it out. Carefully drop it down. And it would look like um, it's easier to just remove a fork and then take off the front mud guard. So I know everyone probably won't be happy with that, but there's the fork. Let's uh, mount it up and get it open. So I realize my clamps are not actually really set up for camera height. <laughs> They're set up for me to work on comfortably. So what we'll do is we'll open off the actual fork cap over here. I should have loosened this more, it would look like. Yeah, I should have, but it'll be okay. So what you wanna do is open this so that you can slide down your outer tube, like so. Okay, looks like we're okay. So this is our spacer. And what I'm gonna have to try to do is um, slide this down. Oh, I should have actually released off my preload. I should have, and I'm going to. Well, you probably can't see this, but just loosening off the preload is a 14. I'm just gonna wind it all the way out. How your preload adjuster works is as you tighten this, this piece here moves down and actually puts pressure onto this sleeve spacer, which puts pressure onto your spring. So what we need to do is get this in underneath this so that we can actually remove the bolt. <laughs> okay, that was not possible to show on camera, but what you wanna do is get this pushed down so you can slide this in um, very difficult to do with one person. If you have a second person to assist you with this, it would be much easier. So now you want to grab this so you can spin off uh, this guy up here. I think this is a 14 from memory. Yes, a 14. There we go. And there's a 22 on the top bolt. That's that off. So this is what we end up with. And so you can just slide everything off. That's your spacer. Here is our spring. So I'm gonna bring our spring over somewhere where I can actually let it drain. So now we can leave this to one side. By the way, this is a Motion Pro damper tool which you will need to bleed the fork properly. So you will need to grab one if you're gonna do this. Let's go over and have a look at this spring. My concern with this spring all along is that it seems to be shorter than the new ones, which as you can, Maybe see, it is. Uh, I think the stock is 290 millimeters long. The new one is like 300 and, let me measure, let me measure. So yeah, the stock spring is 290 mil long. The new one is uh, 315. Now, technically speaking, I'm supposed to remeasure my preload and everything else, but I think I'm just going to chance it and see what happens. Okay, so once we have gotten to this point, I did kind of skip, hi by the way, I did kind of skip some stuff, okay? I did look at using 
um, the stock the Racetech send with uh, the kit. However, it's actually slightly wider than this, um, and I'll show you why that's an issue in a second. So I'm actually gonna cut down this stock piece, which isn't that much more expensive um, to do anyway, uh, so I think it makes more sense to just cut it down. Or sorry, it, like if I wanted to replace it, but the reason I'm doing that is because this cap here um, that sits onto the top of the spacer actually helps to locate the preload adjuster. Um, so that's kind of why I did that. So the difference, the blue tape you see here, the reason that is like that, and I'll show you in a second, is I measured the difference between the standard spring, the black one, and the Racetech spring, okay? This is 290 millimeters long, this is 315 millimeters long, which gives us a difference of 25 millimeters. So what I then did is marked 25 millimeters uh, on my digital calipers, okay? And I locked it, how you lock a calipers is this little pin up here, and then what I did is I scribed a line. How you do that is you literally get your calipers, you put one side to there, and I just scribed the whole way around, okay? And then what I did is I wrapped tape around that scribe line, okay? So pretty straightforward. And the reason that you obviously want a kind of a flat line is you don't want obviously this thing off center. Now, this is all I have to cut it with, which is a wood saw, which is not ideal. Um, I'm gonna obviously have to clean it up afterwards, but that's just what I have uh, on hand, so that's what we're gonna cut it with. Uh, which, like I said, not ideal, but you work with what you have. There we go. So, as you can see, where we cut that is just right above the actual hole as well, which is good when I measured it, because it just means that I didn't have to uh, obviously cut into that hole, um, which I, I'm not concerned about structure or anything, but it's just a little bit a little bit neater that way. So now at least with this, I can get my Dremel, clean up that edge with the sanding piece. Um, actually, it's actually pretty smooth, to be honest. I don't know what this, this material is, I don't know what type of plastic it is. But the nice thing about that is with the stock spring, you can see this kind of cupped end. It sits in real nicely uh, on top of the spring. And now, because these springs, while they are different lengths, they're the same dimensions, I have retained that kind of captive spot. So, pretty happy with this idea. Um, it did take me probably a bit too long to, to come to this idea. But now at least what we can do is fill the fork leg back up with oil and um, put it all back together. We will still need toaster's help to um, pressure this in order to get it back in. But that uh, essentially means that we removed oy, 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 this much um, of the spacer, 25 millimeters. So now if you were to say stack that on top of this, you can see that they're now actually the same height. So that is that is the purpose of that basically, just to keep um, our standard our standard stock preload uh, on the spring all the same. So that's why we did that. So let's um, set this up so I can actually refill my fork leg. <laughs> okay, due to the fact I set this uh, clamp up for working on stuff at like my hand height, uh, this clamp here is way too high for actually showing you properly. It's like literally equal height with me. But what we have here is Racetech uh, Ultra Slick 5 weight oil, um, which is what is specified by them for this bike. We're also going to be doing a 100 millimeter air gap, uh, which is what, again, what is specified by them for this bike. To do the air gap, you want to take out your spring space or all that good stuff and basically just uh, fill it up, set your gap, and then put all that hardware uh, in there. So let's do that. How I will be setting my air gap is with a air gap setter I'll show you in a second. Um, but first I'm just gonna fill this. So the damper rod to bleed it, the service manual says at least 10 pumps. So that's what we'll do. You do wanna get one of these tools for yourself, uh, like a damper rod tool, otherwise this will be very, very difficult. And again, when you actually take your measurement, the damper rod needs to be collapsed the whole way. So then I've already checked this. Uh, there's actually little, you won't be able to see them, there's little gradations on there that tell you what level it's at. However, I did double check it with a actual measurement device to make sure that we were good. And the only thing is that's not really 
held it down too well there, but let's see what we can do. So we overfilled it by what looks like about 20 milliliters, which isn't bad. And then the nice thing about having one of these tools is you can just inject all that oil back into your actual your actual oil container so you don't lose anything, you don't waste anything. Um, which is really nice. In the past I have obviously done um, setups that, you know, I have done setups where like I was relying on just the measuring amount. So like if it said 450 mil, I was putting in 450 mil and just hoping that was right. In this case, you know, thankfully I can afford the tools these days. So I did buy my damper rod tool. I bought my fork oil tool and I'm just a little bit more set up. So next what we can do is put the spring back in. I'm gonna put the spring back in. Then we're gonna put the spacer back in. Then we're gonna put that little uh, collar I showed you earlier. So yeah, we're gonna do spring, spacer, a little collar on top of this. And then we're actually gonna put back on our uh, fork cap. I will need toaster's help for that though, so we're gonna do a little swap. Okay, so with the assistance of toaster, oh, when I push this down, I'll show you where to slide that in. What we're gonna do is get the spacer, and we need to push down. Well, we need to pull this up to make it a lot easier, I suppose. You hold that, and then slide it under that bolt. Oh wait, no. I need to put this down as well. Mind your fingers. So, so just to show you, I did drill two new lower holes here because it was proving too difficult to get everything to sit down with that there. Mind your fingers. Thank you. You can let go for a sec. Will you hold the black piece actually? Okay, so now what we're gonna do is just put back on the fork cap. And in case there's any confusion, there is no way in hell I would be able to do this without assistance. Um, so you will definitely need a second set of hands in order to do this. Okay, so you can slide this pin out. All right, thank you. So that is how you put that back together uh, in a very unsavory way. Honestly speaking, if you're gonna be doing this a lot, I would recommend getting a little fork press? Fork press? I'm gonna say fork press. I don't know how to say the word properly. And we just pull up the other sleeve and twist this in. And that is one fork rebuilt, which will obviously clamp it up properly and tighten it on the bike. Pain in the ass to do, even with the second pair of hands, but thank you very much, Toaster, because I would have probably been in tears out here on my own. Not probably, I would have. But uh, went back together pretty easily. Um, the hard part about this is getting that spring back in there because it's so, so strong if you're putting in a spring as strong as I did. I'm already turning this up now, I suppose, can't I? So um, that is the fork rebuilt. Uh, I'm going to leave you now, take out the other one, debuild that, rebuild that, and then we'll come back when we're putting it all onto the bike. And then hopefully we get to test ride this sooner rather than later would be, would be nice. Okay, so real quick rundown time. Uh, I put back in the left hand fork, as you can see here. This space here should be eight millimeters. Let me try to show you that better. This gap here should be eight mil. Okay, so that eight millimeters from the top of the fork cap to the the top triple. Um, this one is talked to 20 newton meters. These two are talked to 20.5 newton meters. And I did just reinstall one side of this because the easiest way to get that out was to, to kind of take off the whole one fork and then take it out. So that's what we did. Next, we're gonna put back in this fork. One thing to note, before you have a little panic like me, the bottom of this fork here, all right, I want you to note how that is, it's like circular shaped, is not the same as the bottom of this one. So if you lay both of those on a flat surface uh, to check that you did everything properly and that they're the same length, uh, they're not. Uh, you have to put in the axle and then, then you can see that they are or are not correct, which my two are, so yay. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's get this other fork leg back in. After all the figuring on the uh, first fork leg, it genuinely took me like 15, 20 minutes to do the entire one. Like debuild it, clean it, refill it with oil. Yeah. 
just how it goes. So to put it back in, you want to drop it low enough that you can slide it up through this, like that. And then we're gonna, you kind of have to wiggle it to get it up, to keep, to, for it to keep going, we should say. And then, you get that. You can slide it back down. You kind of want to make sure that you're lining up the, there we go, the mud guard with everything. What do Americans call mud guards again? Fend fenders? And so then I'm going to just sit that there. It's not going to fall. You don't need to tighten it yet. And then I have my trusty calipers preset to 8mm, well 8.06. Doesn't make much of a difference. And then what I'm going to do is just pop that on there and pull this down. Okay, there we go. And then that is set to 8 mil. It's pretty, it's pretty, pretty straightforward to do. Once you have that set to 8 mil, I'm gonna just tighten these in by hand first. And then we'll talk these two lower ones. Uh, Cause you don't wanna talk the upper until you actually tighten up the fork cap itself. So just put a little bit of pressure on these guys. And I'm gonna grab my torque wrench. So like I said, 20.5, I already have this preset from doing the other side. Uh, don't ever leave your torque wrenches set, by the way, it's just for this. I know I'd be using it pretty quick. So you want to do one, and then the other, just in little turns. You don't want to put one all the way in, because these are kind of, they work together. You just want to kind of tighten one in at a time. Otherwise, you might not have the correct spacing. So there's one click, and there's two clicks. And then check this one again. See there, you actually do get a little bit more movement. Now we're good. So now we can just tighten up those fork, that fork cap. So the upper fork clamp here is 22, clamp is 22.5. Uh, I don't think I can actually get in a torque wrench onto it um, without uh, moving my handlebar. So I'm just gonna give it a pinch up. And then your upper fork bolt, you wanna back off by a half a Newton meter. It's 20 Newton meters. Uh, if you don't use newton meters, I do apologize, but I only use newton meters, so I don't know the American measurement. I'm gonna wind that in on both sides, because I obviously didn't torque up this side yet either. Then we wanna torque up this side. There you go. Then what you wanna do is put back in your actual uh, mudguard bolts, which are your five millimeter Allens. Um, I usually leave all of these bolts kind of slightly loose until such time as we actually mount up, um, mount up the axle, and then I'll tighten all these up. Uh, just because they can sometimes kind of mess up positioning just a little bit, so I prefer to just kind of do it all like together. If that makes sense. These are the uh, stupid bolts that mount up the stupid reflectors that you have to use in the states. Well, supposed to use in the States. Uh, mine, mine fell off, of course. So, that's all them mounted up. Like you can tell, kind of loose. So next what we're gonna do is put back in the wheel. So nothing on this process is specified as needing any liquids or uh, Loctite or anything, except the front axle, which is specified in the service menu as needing grease. So, we're gonna grease that up. Then make sure that your direction of rotation which is gonna be right there. That arrow is pointing forward. You don't wanna put your uh, your wheel back in backwards. And just lift your wheel up to kind of match where your axle needs to go through. Slide your axle through. Match it up on the far side. And then you just gotta start winding it back in by hand. Uh, the front axle um, torque is 110 Newton meters, by the way. So we will obviously retorque that soon. There's 110 set on the torque wrench. Okay, and we haven't pinched anything, all good. Then our pinch bolt on the bottom of the axle, which I think you can see, yeah, down here, let's go here. That should be 23 Newton meters. So we're gonna wind up to 21, two, three. 
There we go. That's the front back on. Does anyone recognize this? It's a jerry rig everything knife. And I have to say it has been excellent. Put back on front in Kelly PL. So some fresh anti seize on these bad boys. So then what I do with these is I wind them all the way in, but only hand tight. And then what we're gonna do is just kind of set everything up nicely. So the way they're dragging, I'm, I'm gonna show you in a minute how I, how I try to set that up a little bit better. Whoops. I actually forgot to turn back on the camera when these were really bad. But when you have everything still loose, calipers wise, like that was dragging crazy, I spin it. And just keep breaking like that. Kind of helps center everything up. Now these pads aren't actually fully broken in because I installed them and really have barely ridden this bike. Um, but then we can tighten up our caliper bolts. Uh, I know this really upsets people, but I have never torqued caliper bolts in my life. Just as a reminder, these are 12 mil uh, bolts on the calipers. So then when I've had the wheel off the bike as well, I like to give it a quick blast of a uh, quick rub with brake cleaner. Just to make sure anything I may have accidentally gotten on there is uh, kind of taken off. So once that's done, don't forget to put back in your nice little retention clampies. And then we're gonna drop down the front of this bike. And uh, now I'm gonna just tighten up all the other, these bol uh, allens and bolts around here. And don't forget to tighten up your uh, eight mil speed sensor. So I have no idea obviously until I edit, but I do hope this video came out well. Um, this is definitely not one of the easier jobs I've ever done. It is my first time ever doing it. Oh, you're very off center. Yeah, it is my first time ever uh, actually doing this particular uh, job. So pretty happy that it went seemingly well. Um, obviously I would have to adjust my sag a little bit. The front number should be at about 35. Um, so we'll, we'll adjust that and then I will also check the rear as well at some point. Is that easy to accomplish with two people? If you have the couple of tools uh, like the damper rod and the push down tool to get the tension off the spring uh, so that you can slip in your, your lock holder. Um, the, all the tools there, I bought them on Amazon, they cost me like $80 total and I was able to do this job myself. Um, worth doing myself, I, I enjoy doing it myself. Definitely would have been easier with one of those um, actual fork compressors, which maybe in the future I will get. But uh, big thanks to Toaster, would not have been possible to do this job without her. And uh, yeah, I think definitely if you have one of these bikes, I'm gonna test ride this as soon as possible, probably today, to be honest. Um, definitely worth Definitely worth doing the springs because the, the, the stock springs, you even see them, they're, they're much, much, much smaller. Um, and obviously a much lower rate for, for bigger people like myself. So if you're a, a bigger, heavier person, definitely worth doing everything that I've done to this bike, which has been considerable. It has been work, but definitely worth it. I mean, I've had the rear end apart, I've had the front end apart, and I've had uh, the tank off all the way down to get spark plugs. So pretty big jobs. Oh, and the headers. <laughs> pretty big jobs. I think we're, we're done. So. If you've watched all of the jobs, thank you very much for watching. Um, as always, a very special thank you to all of my patrons who supported me mentally and emotionally and financially through all this. I really do appreciate all the support for the channel. And yeah, until next time, thank you again for watching. Uh, leave any questions in the comments. Adios. Outro crew. Um, I know people are gonna come for me for, I'm not a professional, you know, you know? Well, actually, outro crew, there's a question. Do you prefer watching like professionals on YouTube or do you prefer watching people who have a pretty limited budget for tools and everything else um, to see can you theoretically do it yourself at home or do you like watching someone who has all of the tools and you probably can't match that setup. Let me know. Bye, Trucker.